Perry. Takes us to item 12. Thank you, Ewan. Takes us to item 12, the Urban Development Act and establishing the political working group for the um, specified development areas. You can see this report on page 193. Um, the motion on the screen, uh, I'll move in council. That was the previous motion, I think. So we'll, I'll move the next motion. Um, Councillor Bartley, would you like to second, please? And uh, Anna Jennings, we've got on the line. Anna, we've read your report. Um, this is a motion to delegate responsibility to the chair, deputy chair, uh, in consultation with the mayor's office. Um, would you like to introduce, please, Anna? Anna Jennings is our principal advisor, urban growth and housing. Uh, kia ora, Chair, and kia ora, councillors. Um, I'll just uh, quickly run through the uh, report. Uh, so just, I guess, a reminder that the Urban Development Act empowers Kainga Ora to facilitate and undertake urban development. It provides the powers to establish specified development project areas. It's a very complex piece of legislation and I don't intend to go into detail today and I'll, I'll set out what the report covers. So Auckland Council did provide a submission on the Act and I sent a memo out to elected members on the 12th of August which outlined the key changes that were made as a result of our submission. Um, the specific powers in the Act are set out in the attachment to the report. The powers fall into four broad categories around infrastructure, planning, consenting, funding and land acquisition. Uh, the specified development project process is also set out in the attachment to the report. The process is comprehensive and involves an independent hearings panel similar to that used for the Auckland Unitary Plan and there is opportunities for public consultation. So this report relates to recommendation as the Chair has outlined. Um, it's around a procedural process so that when a areas, uh, specified area is proposed by Kaingaora to establish, um, that we recommend a um, political working group is established to provide that political direction to staff. We acknowledge there will be interest when these areas come forward. Um, this is a proactive report, and as yet we're not aware of any specified development project areas in Auckland or an intent by Kaingaora to use these powers. We are already working collaboratively with Kaingaora across a number of areas and specifically under the Auckland Housing Programme and the Auckland Council and Crown Joint Work Programme on Auckland Housing and Growth. As it could be some time before Kaingaora choose to use these powers, we don't expect elected members to understand all parts of the Act and we'll provide a refresh of the Act at that relevant time. Um, this report has been shared with local board services, uh, staff from the IMSB and staff from Auckland Transport and Water Care Service is limited for comment and they um, so happy to take any questions. As I said, this is a sort of proactive report to get the, um, this process set up in advance of any areas coming forward. Thank you, Anna. And members, um, there was a, made a small addition. Um, it's really important that both the chair and the deputy chair of, of your planning committee are, are abreast of this, so the deputy chair's name has been added in there. Uh, please note we've also got the IMSB representation, we've got relevant ward councillors and the relevant boards. Um, I uh, and, and Councillor Bartley will ensure that if we get a sense that um, you know, individuals, uh, elected members need to be abreast of what comes in. We'll make sure that we reach out um, and uh, have people uh, be aware of these um, special um, development area applications. I would also like to add that the my observation is the relationship with Kainga Aura is dramatically different to the relationship we, we had with the former Housing New Zealand. Uh, Councillor Hills and I spent almost three hours with Kainga Ora on site visit, um, I think it was last Friday. Um, and the access to information is um, somewhat different and there's a much better communication flow now, which is great. So that gives us some uh, a good foundation for our relationship going forward with the recently established Kainga Ora representing the Crown. Questions, members, of this? There being no questions, I'll go straight to comments, and Councillor Cooper, please. Thank you, Mr Chair, and I think this is a eminently sensible thing to do. Um, I, I'm quite alarmed at some of the um, changes that could affect our own unitary plan, and, and which we don't really have a lot 
a say on, to be quite honest, but I think we've got to have robust responses ourselves. Um, this will affect the timing of infrastructure. It will can undermine parts of the unitary plan. Um, so I think to sit b idly by and do nothing, mm. um, even though hoping it's not futile, but I think it's really important to have good um, input into whatever's happening. It, it, it'll have significant effects for Auckland and some not good. Um, but I, I was a little bit reassured by a member of the Kainga Oral, Oral Board who said, oh, this will be really used, but it doesn't comfort me completely. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So thank you, thank you for putting this together. Thank you. Are there other comments? And Councillor Kluber, you're, you're quite right. And I think in the um, agenda here, we've, we've got the memo that went out just a few days ago from Simon Randall, alerting us to the very concerns that you uh, are highlighting. Um, and I think every elected member across Auckland is thinking of the same issues. There are some challenges here, but we've got statute in place now. It's the highest law from the parliament and uh, we have to work with it. Uh, we can't work against it, so we will work with it. Um, we also know that there is an enormous uh, challenge for the government delivering uh, social housing and, and housing uh, generally. So, uh, and I know we're all signed up to progress that as well, but we need to progress it um, mindful of what our plans are as well for Auckland. Um, we shall do that. So there being no further comment, I'll go straight to the vote. It's moved and seconded. All those in favour say aye. 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 To, the aye. to the contrary, no. Declare that carried. Thank you. And thank you, Anna. Appreciate uh, your work on that. And um, 13 is um, procedural. Can I have a mover for the receipt of the Planning Committee information items? Deputy Mayor moves. Happy to move, Mr Chair. And the name, is that Councillor Fletcher? Chris, Thank you. Chris Fletcher. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. And it is moved and seconded. All those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Declare that carried. Uh, there is no business under item 14, uh, extraordinary business, which takes us to item 15, where we close the open session of this meeting. And um, I'll move the procedural motion to exclude the public. Uh, Councillor Mulholland will second and uh, move, uh, sorry, uh, take a vote on that now. All those in favour say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Declare that carried. So I close the uh, open record part of the meeting and we'll take uh, two minutes. And members, if you could please go to your second invitation, members... Uh, councillors, Mayor and IMSB members, if you could go to your second Skype invitation, close this one and open that and we'll join you in just two minutes for uh, item C1. Thank you. <laughs>